We know not Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry. Founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers, this is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program, The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I have with me uh, my good brother, Jose Rivera. Good to be here, Pastor. And my other good brother, Patrick Jones. Nice to be here with you. All right, good. Thank you for being here. Um, in the last program, we promised that we, we will be dealing uh, with uh, some controversial I call it controversial Bible verses or mis uh, Bible verses that are very misunderstood, yeah. misunderstood mm -hmm. by the people at large in reference to the true seven-day Sabbath. We, we promise that, and by God's grace, that's what we're going to get into today. So there'll be no confusion after today, and I hope and pray that the whole world, everybody who is watching, even if, you know, uh, the Pope from Rome will be watching it, he can uh, also see the truth of the seven-day Sabbath. Mm. But I'm going to ask you, my brother Rivera, lead us in prayer first. Okay. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you every time for the privilege to study your word. We ask for your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us as we go into this topic concerning the Sabbath, the feast days, and Lord, just being prepared for this soon coming of Jesus Christ that you have given us your word in, in plenty of Bible verses, Lord, to give us that hope. We thank you and we just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just as a brief review of the last program, we noticed throughout the Bible, all in New Testament, that the seven-day Sabbath, uh, the fourth commandment, was given... In, you know, was included in the Tenth Commandment as a sign of grace, as a sign of a creator and a redeemer to his people. That's right. Right? That's right. Okay. And we also mentioned that uh, no wonder then the enemy has been so upset with that particular commandment. Now, if I ask you, why not spending more time than in talking about, let's say, the fifth commandment. The fifth commandment got to do with the, that we should honor our father and mother, right? Or the sixth commandment, thou should not kill. Uh, what would be the answer that we would give? Well, that's not the area where the controversy is. We could talk about the fourth commandment, and we could talk about the Seventh Commandment, mm -hmm. but the Fourth Commandment will be the special controversy that will affect everyone on planet Earth. That, that's an answer. That's a good answer. And, and let's be realistic. Out of the Ten Commandments, at least by the Protestants and Catholic all together, that's the only commandment that I don't see that they kind of uh, understand it. Or wants to understand yes it. by far by far worldwide is the most misunderstood of the commandments it's been the devil's privilege and deceptive desire to deceive the whole world and he's done a good job for the last few thousand years no wonder that's the only commandment that begin saying remember that's right the only one out of the ten yes it's interesting that the two institutions that God created, marriage and the Sabbath, are the ones that are being attacked. And we're going to focus on the Sabbath, but it's interesting that marriage also is being attacked. And those two institutions was established by God even before sin started on this earth. That's Amen. right. To the first pair, He gave them those institutions. And by sacredly guarding these two institutions, it would promote eternal happiness for the two. But as we see, the devil knows that if he can break up those two, then he can deceive the whole world and cause as many to be destroyed as he possibly can. Do you know that Jesus 
mentioned in John 14, 29. We can quote it by, by heart. I have told you before it happened. Of course, I'm doing it with my Spanish. Yeah, so that when it does come to happen, you might have peace. Okay. So what we're trying to do over here, obviously, is bringing all this issue out through television, through newspaper, major newspaper around the country. I don't know. I, I, I used to have a copy around here. I don't know what did I do with it. But there, there, there was a, you know, we're doing it around the, around the world, mm -hmm. reminding people that, yes, this commandment, the fourth commandment, is going to be so attacked that Satan is going to try to establish by law a counterfeit Sabbath, That's the right. first day of the week, the Sunday. And, and when we say he's going to do it, well, he has been doing it throughout the centuries, but he's going to be doing more openly in the last days. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what is the blue laws referred to in America? Talking about America. Well, they refer to the Sunday blue laws, the Sunday closing laws that have been made in various states, mm. but never in an, on a national level. Right. Uh, many people don't even know why those blue laws existed. And I'm sure most of our viewers don't even, haven't even paid attention to that. But those blue laws, so-called blue laws, it's a, a way that I see how the enemy has been a custom society. So when a national Sunday law will be pushed by clergy and the secular, the same way that it happened at the beginning in the year 321st in the third century by the secular and the bishop of Rome, people will say, so what? It's good. Let's try to keep the family together. Yeah, yeah. You know, Pastor, I, I want to... Um I want to say we should get into our, our, our lesson for today. Okay. One, one of the most controversial things is many people say, well, the Sabbath was for the Jews. And they always yeah. refer to the different feasts and things that were going on. They say that when Jesus died on the cross, he nailed the Sabbath to the cross. That's usually what they say. But you know, the verse doesn't say that he nailed the Sabbath. It doesn't say that. We'll actually read it. It's in Colossians chapter 2. I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. In verse 14, it says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. What he nailed to the cross was the handwriting of ordinances. Handwriting. That tells us that uh, the, the Ten Commandments included, what is included, the Fourth Commandment on the Seventh day Sabbath, was a handwritten? No. I, I mean, a handwriting by man, by Moses? No, not at all. It was written with the finger of God. This was not the handwriting referring to. This the handwriting of ordinances was that which was written by Moses. Okay. And move on, please. Okay. Verse 15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or in the new moon or of the Sabbath day. They want to say that the Sabbath days have been done away with as a result of these verses here. Mr. Jones, my brother Patrick Jones, what Sabbath days is Paul talking about? Well, back in the Old Testament, 2,500 years after God created the Sabbath day on the week of creation, there were seven ceremonial Sabbaths. Seven. Seven ceremonial mm. Sabbaths yeah. and feast days that God gave to Moses that the children of Israel would follow until Christ the Messiah came, who, who is the antitype of those, uh, of all the laws of the ceremonial law pointing to the Messiah to come. So, so wait a minute, those ceremonial Sabbath, seven ceremonial Sabbath, mm -hmm. the, those Sabbath, or sab yeah, days of Sabbath, ceremonial, they were given, those were the only one of the Sabbath that were given to Israel, and it came, of course, way after the sin problem started in this 2,500 years after Adam sinned. Okay. It was at the time when the children of Israel were 
sinning and God was instituting this sanctuary service, the sanctuary and its services. No wonder, I know Brother Jose couldn't read it, but in Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, it can says, you read it too? As we continue in this reading, Talking it about says, all those ceremonial that's styles. right, the ceremony says, says, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So those ceremonial Sabbath were a shadow or a sample or a type of who? Of Christ. Of Christ and His ministry. That's yes. Right. And that's what we're going to see. Yes. Okay. The feast days and the ceremonial Sabbaths are listed and mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23. I'm not going to read all the verses, but just mention that in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which you had first the Passover day, and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The day after Passover was a Sabbath. Mm. And in, fa in fact, the day that Christ was resting in the grave was a high Sabbath. That meant mm. the seventh-day Sabbath and the ceremonial Sabbath fell on the same day. Mm. Yeah. The ceremonial Sabbaths could fall on any day of the week. They were like a birthday. And on Christ, when He was crucified, the next day He rested in the grave. That happened to be a day when the moral Sabbath of the Ten Commandments and the ceremonial Sabbath fell on the same day. A high Sabbath, the Bible says. Well, so the, the, the first ceremonial Sabbath in Leviticus chapter 23 is found on verse 7. And that's the one you're talking about? Okay, and there was another one in the Feast of Unleavened Bread at the end of that feast. Verse 8. That okay. would be another that, that, That's the second one. And the third one... Was the Feast of Pentecost 50 uh, uh, days later? Uh, and verse 21. And there, there it says it would, that would occur on the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. On the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. Fifty that's, days later. That's and the fourth ceremonial Sabbath, Levitical chapter 23, that's the, verse 23 and 24. That's the you Feast know? of Trumpets. Okay. And the Day of Atonement were the fourth and fifth ceremonial Sabbath days. Uh -huh. And then the sixth and seventh ceremonial Sabbaths okay. were found in the Feast of Tabernacles. Man, you... I, I think you, we were going too fast. I, I want our viewer to, to understand. Remember, most of our people might be listening to this for the first time, this explanation. Uh, okay, is that okay? The, the, the first one you explained already, the typing and the type. Right. If we can just take one at a time, you know, to explain how it had been fulfilled in the life and the ministry of Jesus. So the first one was fulfilled. Passover. The Passover. That's why Jesus knew exactly what day he mm. had to be in Jerusalem to be the lamb. He was the Passover lamb okay. on that day. Let, let me read that text there. Paul talks about this idea of the Passover. And he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, he says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Mm -hmm. When Christ was that final Passover lamb, he fulfilled the feast day of the Passover that was pointing towards it. Okay, uh, we're going to continue with this because this is very important study and the type and anti-type. But we'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back, my brother Patrick. So we are looking at into the what we call, uh, or the Bible calls, a ceremonial Sabbath. And those Sabbath we have seen so far were given by God to the children of Israel, okay, uh, and it was a shadow of the ministry of Christ, as Brother Rivera read in Colossians two seventeen. 14 through 17. And uh, on the chapter 23 of Leviticus, starting with verse 15, and we don't want to read the whole thing, of course, but going up to verse 22, that's when we find another ceremonial Sabbath. 
a Sabbath that was nailed on the cross. And it was a type of something in relationship with the ministry of Christ. I want you to come into that. Well, the Passover was associated with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They had two ceremonial Sabbaths. Right. And, and the Feast of Un Unleavened Bread represents sin, and that was to show we should not have sin in our lives or in our house. Mm -hmm. The next feast was the Feast of Pentecost, 50 days later. Right. And it was instituted 50 days after they came out of Egypt. They were at Mount Sinai. God gave the law of God 50 days after they came from Egypt. When Christ died on the cross, 50 days later, the early rain fell and started and was writing God's law on the fleshy tables of their new hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's the new covenant. And so Pentecost was fulfilled in the upper room when Christ was inaugurated as high priest, the glory of the Lord spilled out of the heavenly sanctuary into the courtyard where 120 people were waiting and looking up to Christ as their high priest. And, and again, many people say that just because they received this Pentecost experience on a Sunday, that it would sanctify the day because God blessed it by giving His Holy Spirit. Even though God gave it by giving His Holy Spirit, the reason why it happened was a fulfillment of what we're talking about here, not because there was a transference of sanctity. Leviticus prophesied it would happen on a Sunday because it says in Leviticus 23, 16, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. That's right. <laughs> so so they're, they're keeping seven Sabbaths, and then on, on the next day or on the morrow, that's when it would fall, and that's what, 50 days? There is a four ceremony, four, five, and four and five, and that was on the, during the feast of the trumpet. Yes. The feast of the trumpet will come later on, and that is found in Leviticus chapter twenty-three, verses twenty-three and on. Well, of course, we're not going to read it all, but you will find right there that that was that they were supposed to keep two Sabbath, two ceremonies. And, and again, let's let, let's repeat: those Sabbath can fall. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, any day of the week. Yeah, let me make just one statement on this. The reason why they were called Sabbaths is because even if it landed on a Wednesday, you know, according to their calendar, all it said was during the first, the first day of the seventh month, or, right. you know, depending on whichever one landed, yeah. if it landed on a Wednesday, they were to treat that day as if it were a Sabbath. Not that it was the Sabbath, but right. because of the occasion, because of what it represented, they were to treat it in that way. But once Christ fulfilled those things, as we're looking at here, then those Sabbaths were done away with, right. but the Sabbath of the Lord is still remaining to be eternal. Amen, amen. Uh, One thing. Maybe because Sabbath is rest. That's right. And rest is Sabbath. That's right. And, 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 but there is a difference, again, about the eternal Sabbath and the, those ceremonial Sabbath. That's right. One was in the moral Ten Commandment law written by the finger of God. The other one was in these ceremonies in connection with the Jewish sanctuary at that time. Yes. One thing about these feast days was that the first three were in the spring of the year, and these last four are in the fall of the year. And this represents that the first ones were fulfilled in the beginning of the Christian era. The last at the end of the year would be toward the end of the Christian era. By the way, when the Feast of the Trumpets would it take place? What was about to happen? What was getting closer at that time? Yes, 10 days, right about 10 days before the Day of Atonement, the trumpet would tell the people, begin to prepare because the judgment. atonement is coming. Judgment. judgment was coming. The Day of Judgment was coming. Wow, 10 days. Can we find in the history of Christianity something um, is like an antitype? Very a, a, much a, so. period, a period in the time, especially in North America and, and around the world, where there was a big awakening a, a revival, a spiritual revival, because something took place in 1833. What, 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 what happened in 1833, November 1st? That was the last of Christ's signs for Second Coming, the greatest meteor shower in the history of the world, the falling of the stars. 
the falling of the stars. Right. And, and what, what, what happened? What history tells us of what happened uh, starting in North America and went throughout the world? Well, there was a movement that began, and the movement Every was night. the study of the second coming of Christ. And many, many people say that it was spearheaded by a man named William Miller. Historically, he was given a certificate by the Baptist Church to be a preacher at that time. Right. And he studied the next chapter of Daniel that we'll be looking, Daniel 8, 14, <laughs> unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That's what happened on the Day of Atonement. And so a, a movement of people started studying that and getting ready for what they thought they, would be the cleansing of the sanctuary. They right. thought the earth was going to be cleansed by fire when Jesus came. So they were right. The cleansing of the sanctuary was about to start. They just couldn't distinguish if it was going to be on this earth or in heaven. But we're going to get into that in another program. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Because I don't want our viewers to Remember, be... they were coming out of the Dark Ages. Right. So a lot, of the, a lot of the truths had been hidden for centuries. That's why. Right. That's why. Right. That's why. Right. So we see, we can find the fulfillment of those trumpets, like awakening time. That's right. There's some religious program uh, out there calling the, they talk about all this awakening. That's and right. yes, there, is a, there was an awakening. That's right. So all these feasts thus far then, okay. from number one all the way to number six, we have seen a fulfillment of, and the last one to be fulfilled number that we six. have yet to see. Well, number six was the atonement. That was another. No, number five was the atonement. It, well, no, number six. Six and seven. It, yeah, yeah. Five, four and five, yeah. it was on the trumpets, the yeah. first and the last day. Then the number six is on the date of the atonement, yeah. which you find in verse 35, Leviticus chapter uh, 23, because it says that they, nobody should do any work that day. That was a Sabbath day, a rest a day. Yeah, the last, okay. the last event in the Jewish um, feast and observances was the Feast of the Tabernacles. Throughout every year. That's right. Every year. Now, are we living in the time of the, of the Tommy? In the Feast of Tabernacles, there were two ceremonial Sabbaths. Right. That's number six and number seven. We're not quite there yet. We're still living in the antitype of the Day of Atonement. On, on the Feast of the Tabernacle, that is an, the, the, that's where I have the seven, yeah. Six and seven. Six and seven? Yeah. Okay. We will see uh, oh, six and seven on the first day be a holy congregation. Okay, I see what you're saying. And on the seventh day, okay. Mm -hmm. So the date of the, uh, on the, um, the Feast of the Tabernacle, where, where can we find in the Bible the anti-type? When are we going to meet those type? Well, it was a celebration to the end of the year. And the Lord, I believe, when He comes back in the clouds of glory, we're going to be able to participate in that great and grand glorious day. The that was when they gathered all the right. harvest, right? right. The harvest the had harvest. been gathered in. So what a great feast is awaiting for God's people then out there. Amen. Amen. Okay. I hope that we can all be a part of that. Praise God. And we hope our viewers too. Now there is another Bible verse I want to bring before we forget. It's in chapter 14 of the book of Romans, verses 1 through 5. Before you go there, oh. uh, we're go I, we need to connect these feast days with the verse in Colossians. And that would be found in Leviticus 23, 37, just one verse. Okay. And notice the phrases that are repeated by Paul in Colossians. Okay. Paul, uh, Moses says in Leviticus 23, 37, These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, or holy days, uh -huh. to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, mm. a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day. And this is what was uh, done away with at the cross, okay. these feast days and their ceremonial Sabbath days. Far off of, from being the fourth commandment. Yeah, right. you, know, you know, just a, just a small side note, we won't dwell on it much. If you read Leviticus 2, verses 1 and 2, the meat offering actually had even no flesh meat in it. Many people try to use that as a reason that we should not be judged by eating pork and all kinds of meats and things. But again, that's not this episode. But Yeah, yeah. okay, in, in the book of Romans, chapter 14, 5 and 6, verse 5 and 6, can you read it, please? One man esteemed one day above another, another esteemed every day alike, 
Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. I mean, many people use those verses saying, you know what, it doesn't matter. If you regard the seven-day Sabbath, you say, that's okay. I got no problem with it. But, and they take the understanding from these verses that if they take Sunday, well, it doesn't matter either. Because, and they quote these Bible verses. Obviously, what Paul, what type of day was Paul referring into over here? I think he was talking about days for fasting. Yeah, some, day, it, some people preferred one day, another person preferred another. But not only for fasting, but also remember, um, during the first century of Christianity, there were some Jewish people still converting into Christianity. And they were still keeping those uh, ceremonial, and that's the pro one of the problems oh. that Paul is facing in the book of Gal in Galatia. That's why, you know, he, he kind of go against those uh, 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 people that were trying to Judaize, Judaizing, is that, is that Judaizing. Right? okay? Yeah. Trying to make the Christians a Jew. Yeah, let, but, but that got nothing to do with the fourth commandment either. That's right. Let me make another uh, connection with Colossians. In Colossians, when it speaks about meat or drink, respect of holy day, new moons, and Sabbath days. These are all connected. Remember the first verse says that he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances. Mm -hmm. If you read in Exodus chapter 12, the Passover was called an ordinance. Mm -hmm. Notice this verse in Second Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to Him, and to burn before Him sweet incense, and for continual showbread, and for burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feast of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. So we see that these feast days were the ordinances the law of God was not blotted out, but the feast days and all therein was blotted out. Including those ceremonial Sabbaths. Exactly. Seven of those. Which were called the feast days of the Lord. Do you want to, do you want, do you want to take 10 seconds? No? That's good. Then. Okay. All right. Um, we, we, we're gonna, we have to close. And before we close, I just want to remind you that it is God's desire to place His sign, His uh, seal upon your mind and upon my mind. It is His desire to sanctify thy life, to sanctify our life, because the Bible says without sanctification nobody will see His face. May God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.